Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the parish family of St. Peter Claver. As we gather together to celebrate the sixth Sunday in ordinary time, we turn our hearts and minds to God in thanksgiving and give all our energy in prayer and in worship as the body of Christ. In the first reading, God protects the chosen people as they make their way to the promised land. In the second reading, Paul encourages us to work just as he does for the glory of God. And in the gospel, Jesus shows his compassion by healing a leper who, contrary to Jesus' wishes, publicized the whole matter. Today's mass is celebrated for Terence Bertrand and Daniel C. McTague. Please stand for our entrance. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your My sisters and brothers, we gather together as God's family, together to give honor, glory, and praise to our God, who promised to walk this journey with us. He promised never to leave, and he never will. As we begin this celebration of his love for us, let us allow the Lord to embrace us with his peace. Lord Jesus, you cleanse us from sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you make present the reign of God among us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your presence heals our soul. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And now for the last time before um, Holy Thursday, let us give all the glory to our God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
a reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or a pustle or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Then I acknowledge my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exult, all you upright of heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down, begged him and said, If you wish, 
you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go now and show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Several years ago, an elderly man collapsed on a busy street in Brooklyn. An ambulance brought him to Kings County Hospital. There, he kept calling for his son. In his pocket was a letter from his son that a nurse found. It became clear that his son was a Marine stationed in North Carolina. That night, an anxious Marine showed up at the hospital. Immediately, the nurse took him to the elderly man's bedside. The man was heavily sedated. The nurse had to tell him several times, your son is here, your son is here. Finally, he opened his eyes. He could barely make out his son, but he recognized his Marine uniform. At that point, the son took his father's hand and held it lovingly. For the rest of that night, the Marine sat at the elderly man's bedside. He kept patting the man's hand and spoke to him tenderly. Several times the nurse urged the Marine to take a break, get something to eat or drink, but he refused. Towards dawn, the elderly man died. When the nurse extended her sympathy to the young man, the Marine said, who was that man? Wasn't he your father, the nurse asked? No, he wasn't. I never saw that man before in my life. Why didn't you say something, the nurse asked. I would have, he said, but I could see that he was too sick to realize I wasn't his son. I could also see that he had very little time left on this earth and he needed a son. So I decided to become that son for him. I really like that true story. It illustrates the kind of compassion that Jesus showed the leper in today's gospel when Jesus stretched out his hand to touch him and healed him. That's exactly what the Marine did out of compassion for this elderly man. He stretched out his own hand, touched him, and brought him a peaceful death. My sisters and brothers, if we are truly followers of Jesus, isn't that what each and every one of us is called to do? Reach out our hand and be the compassionate touch to those who are hurting, those who are in need, Wait a minute, Father Bob, what are you talking about? We're in the middle of a pandemic. We can't reach out and touch anyone. Oh yeah, that's right, that's true. So is that the end of it? Not at all. We have had to adjust to a lot of things during this pandemic. 
perhaps we need to adjust to the way we show compassion as well. Here are some examples. During those two or three months that we were all basically locked down, people were still in need of compassion, healing, Jesus' touch. I personally was unable to go to homes or hospitals or convalescent homes, especially when people were in their last days or hours. Pre-pandemic, I would go to them, anoint them with oil, place my hand upon their head, and pray. Could not do that now, so I decided to pray with them another way, over the phone. The families would often report that peace came over them and upon their loved ones as they listened on the phone. I couldn't reach out my hand to touch them, but Jesus could, and he did. We couldn't have funerals in the church, only graveside site services, I think, as you all know. But Ray Hartman, our, our cantor, came to every one of those graveside services. He sang beautiful healing hymns. The families were truly grateful. Jesus, Jesus reached out his hand and touched them. This Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. How could we use the same thumb to place ashes on foreheads, one person after the other after the other? We can't adjust. We're going to use Q-tips. So everyone will still be able to hear Jesus say, turn from your sins and believe in the gospel. Jesus will reach out his hand to every single one. Now on a personal note, you all know that I'm a hugger. Talk about being a withdrawal. I truly am. I would easily, as you know, give or receive about 200 hugs every single weekend at the door of that church as everybody was leaving pre-pandemic. Well, you know how Jesus had pity on the leper in today's gospel? The leper that no one would touch? Yet nothing stopped Jesus. He reached out his hand with compassion and touched that leper. Well, Jesus has had pity on me. I have never felt so close to Jesus as I do right now during this pandemic. You see, I make a point of stopping for a moment several times a day now and become aware of Jesus' presence. And he hugs me every single time. My sisters and brothers, this week, we are entering the Lenten season during this pandemic. What can we do? What can I do? What can you do to reach out to someone with compassion from a distance during this Lenten season, even this very week? We're all suffering through this, but some people are extremely isolated, alone, <clears throat> afraid, even feeling abandoned. We probably all know at least one person in our lives that is in that extreme category. Reach out the best that you can. FaceTime, phone call, email, text, a card, Remember, we used to send cards all the time. Get them out of the drawer. Drop off groceries or some goodies at, your, at that person's door with a beautiful, caring note. They're not forgotten. They're loved and cared about. Let's all do something so that Jesus can reach out his hand and touch them.
as a family of faith, let us together profess what we all believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To the God of mercy who gives us wholeness in Jesus Christ, we bring all of our prayers of petition. For all who lead the church, that they may find new strength in fervent prayer and cheerful service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, that they may strive daily to faithfully and lovingly live out their marriage vows, bearing witness to the love God has for each of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That the Lord look lovingly on Kevin William Bone, who will be baptized this weekend. May the lives of his parents and godparents be examples of faith to inspire him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the swift recovery of those suffering with the effects of COVID-19, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray in a special way today for Terence Bertrand and Daniel C. McTague. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all who have recently died, including Constant Noonan, may they rest and rejoice in the peace, love, and joy of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the intentions in our Book of Hope, our prayer chain, and for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All powerful God, you govern the nations with love. Listen to our prayers and show the fullness of your reign. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this offering, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ, who is our Lord. For out of compassion for us, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim together. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Leonard, our Bishop, his assistant Bishop Juan Miguel, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those who are worshiping with us from home, I invite you to a spiritual Holy Communion. Just repeat these words after me, either out loud or to yourself, meaning every word, of course. And if you wish, you could place your hand on your heart. Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my being. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come now spiritually into my heart. I embrace you with all my love. and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be parted from you. As we feed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food which we truly live for, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Our celebration is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. With Lent beginning, we have several announcements today, and I have the first one. Uh, as I said, this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. This year, because of the pandemic, we are adjusting. We already, uh, you already heard about the Q-tips, but that we'll be using. Our schedule will also be adjusted as well to ensure that as many people who want to start Lent with ashes can do so. Therefore, we will have one mass 
on Ash Wednesday at 7 a.m. with the distribution of ashes. Then, instead of a service and an additional mass, both of which would severely limit those who could attend, we will simply have the distribution of ashes, just a distribution of ashes, at 3 o'clock and 5.30. Come into the church wearing your mask, socially distanced, an usher will point you down the aisle they need you to go down, receive the ashes, and then immediately exit the church. Okay, Jeff. Here are today's announcements. Andres Galliano, a seminarian for the Archdiocese of Hartford who spent a summer here with us, will be offering an online Lenten reflection series featuring the videos of Cardinal Sean O'Malley during the sacred season of Lent. Please consider joining him for a five-week mini-series on Zoom where faith sharing and discussion will take place around several topics. Meetings are scheduled for Monday evenings from 7 to 8 p.m. starting on Monday, February 22nd. For further information on how to register, please check the bulletin and our website. Visio Divina is a form of divine seeing in which we prayerfully invite God to, seek to, our, to speak to our hearts as we look at a piece of art. You were invited to join us in this practice on two Lenten Sundays, February 21st and March 7th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Call the office to receive a Zoom link invitation to these sessions. And Sister Marianne Cantlon will lead a special Lenten scripture reflection on Thursday, February 25th in the parish hall from 1 to 2.30 p.m. She will cover the stories of the Samaritan woman and the man born blind. Reservations are required, and as we socially distance, space is limited to 20 people. Please reserve your space. To reserve your space, please visit our website. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, And precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone. I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me my 
my hand, precious Lord, lead me home.